Hello and welcome back. This is Cheryl. I'm so thankful that you're here. Today I'm going to show you how to do some marbling of papers with alcohol inks. So I have a tub of water here and I'm just going to drop alcohol inks in the water. Some of it will stay floating, some of it will go and mix in with the water. And you're going to use whatever colors you're wanting. Now, disclaimer, this is not going to look like traditional marbled papers, but it is going to create a really, really cool background. Now, because we're using a tub of water, you need to use a cardstock that is going to be able to handle that water. So I'm doing this on watercolor cardstock. You could also do it on mixed media paper. So you're going to put whatever colors you're wanting on your surface. You can leave it like that or you can use something to twirl it around. I tend to like to leave it like that. But you'll notice how there's pockets that don't get anything on it. And that's likely from an air pocket or a bubble being trapped between the water and the paper. So I'll just dip it in a second time to get that area covered. And then I'll set the papers aside to completely dry. So I'm going to add some more colors to this water and create another background. So again, use whatever colors you're wanting. I typically will try to use colors that are similar to each other, not too opposite on the color wheel because I don't really want to make brown here. You'll notice that the colors kind of stay in their areas and um, don't move around a ton. And they do tend to stay on the surface. You can't see the different colors as clearly with this one just because the last one has affected the color of the water but it's not gonna affect the color of the print. And in this one, I used some terracotta and some blue um, just to get a little bit of contrast in there. And I don't end up getting too much brown in that. So these papers that we're creating can be used for whatever you want. You can use them as backgrounds or you can use them um, to die cut. And I'll show you some samples at the end of the video of both ways. So you'll see I put a skewer in this one and broke the colors up a little bit. And that's what it ended up looking like. Oh, it wasn't a blue, it was a green that I had used. And once again, there's some white pockets. I typically put my paper in at an angle to try to avoid that, but there doesn't seem to be a way to completely avoid it. But you'll see that dipping it in a second time completely corrects that. So once again, I'm gonna put my paper off to the side now we'll do the same procedure and create a third paper. I'm going to do four different papers in total. So, so far I have only used plain colors. I haven't used any metallics. I will use a metallic, but it doesn't show up on this the same way as metallics look in alcohol ink. It does give it a different tone. It's kind of a little bit chalky, but you don't see the metallic, the shimmer. Here's where I go and add some silver metallic to the top of this. So just be aware that if you do use metallics with this, it's going to show up differently than if it does than it in with alcohol ink paintings. So you'll definitely notice a difference on how it sits on the surface. And once again, you can use a skewer to break that up, or you could also dip in or drop in other alcohol ink colors to kind of break that up a little bit. But you'll see they kind of stay where they are. They don't really break up on their own. So you do need to use more of a skewer in order to make those areas a little bit smaller. So in just a second, you're gonna see what I mean when I say that it doesn't show up the same way as metallics do with alcohol ink paintings. So it kind of shows up as a dark gray, and if you touch it, it's got kind of a like a velvety texture to it. It's definitely got a different finish to it. And what I haven't shown here is the backside you get a completely different texture on the back side of the paper and sometimes that's the nicer side to use. So if you like that back side, absolutely use it. I'm going to do one more print here. I've got a little bit of metallic still on the top. I'm going to add some more colors and take my final print. Don't forget while you're watching to hit the subscribe button and the like button. Let me know if this is the type of content that you enjoy watching and also hit the notifications button to be notified of new videos when they get posted. Now you'll notice as we go along the, pa the water itself gets a little bit murkier and murkier and it's a little bit harder to tell what the print is going to look like. Um, if you wanted you could get new water between each and every print but I kind of figured that was a waste of water and you can see that it doesn't affect the print colors 
so there's no reason for to do it that way. So here's my last one. I didn't add any extra metallics, but I still have some of those flecks that were staying on the top. So I'm going to let those papers completely dry. This is them totally dried. And they create quite a neat background. And once again, it's not the same as marbling. It's got a completely different look from it, but it's another fun way to use your alcohol inks in a way that's not really conventional. And now let's take those papers and do them in cards. So I did that off screen. This one here, I just used one of those prints as a background and added a wildflower die cut in front of it. This one here, I used my perspective butterfly die and die cut one of those prints to create a card. This one, I die cut one of the birds and one of the feathers and another feather because I really like them and they're new to me and novelty. Um, and then the last one I did a butterflies card and created butterflies with a solid color as well to highlight that print. Thank you so very much for joining me. I hope you have a fabulous day.